भगवदीता किंचिदीता गंगा जल लव कणिका पीता सकृदेव मुरारी समर्चा ना क्रिएत यमेन चर्चा मलिनी मोचनम पुंसा जल स्नान दिने दिने सकृद गीता मृत स्नान संसार मलनाशनम ओम ज्ञान तिरंध से ज्ञानाजनशलाकया चक्षुरुन्मील ये नस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतनोभीष्ट स्थित येन भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा मैं ददाती स्वदातिक वंदेह श्रीगुर श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुरून्वैष्णवांश श्रीरूप सागर जा सह गना रघुनाथ तम सजीव साइत सवधूत परिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सह गना ललिता श्री विशाखा हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपति गोपीशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी विषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय गुरव गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय तदालये कृष्णा कृष्ण भक्ताय तद्भक्ताय नमो नम मुखम करोति वाचालम अंगुम लंगायते गिरी यत्तम वंदे श्रीगुरूदीन तारिणम परमानंदमाधव श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर नम पंकजनाभाय नम पंकज मलिने नम पंकज नेत्राय नमस्ते पंकजांग्री कृष्णवर्ण तुषा कृष्ण सांगोपांगास्त्र पार्षद यज्ञ संकीर्तन प्रायजी सुमेध सह साधु संग साधु संग सर्वशास्त्र कोय लव मात्र साधु संग सर्व सिद्धि होय शृण्वता सकथा कृष्ण पुण्य श्रवण कीर्तन हृदय भद्रा विधुनोती सुहृत्सता सता प्रसंगे मम वीर संविधो गृणंती हृत्कर्सायन कथा तज्जोषनादपवर्गवर्तमनी श्रद्धा रतिर्भक्तिरुक्रमिष्य वाचाकूप्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त बिंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे दर्शन प्रभु मेन्शन a summary of the first six chapters of bhagavad gita and he compared it to a, a jewel box right the jewel box is important but the inside is the most important or sometimes it's also compared to a sandwich right like a cheese sandwich or a um, you know paneer sandwich or aloo sandwich whatever the two two uh, sides is the the bread right but it's the inside which makes it different the so inside whether it's the potatoes or cheese or some other things that's more important right so the essence is always kept inside by the covering so the essence of bhagavad gita is bhakti very simple the essence of the whole bhagavad gita is manmana bhav man bhakti so therefore it's repeated twice and not just twice but actually if you If we observe Prabhupada's purports carefully, 
any purport, every purport will take us to the essence because the Mahatmas, the great souls like Srila Prabhupada, always point us to the essence and the essence is to take shelter of Krishna to be really happy. Without that, we cannot be happy. So, the bhakti is the essence. The connection process, as Gandharshan Prabhu mentioned, in the first, pretty much the chapters number three to six, is the linking process. The linking process through, through work is, is, is karma yoga. The linking process, yoga comes from the root word yuj. The linking process through jnana or knowledge is jnana yoga, through meditation, dhyana yoga, ashtanga yoga. And these are different ladders as when the karma matures to knowledge, the knowledge matures to meditation, and meditation ultimately matures to bhakti. But the bhakti yoga is also the express ladder. So let me share that with uh, this nice uh, slide made by a few devotees here. So this is the extended yoga ladder from animal life, right? Unregulated life. No concept of God. Eat, sleep, be merry. You know, eating, sleeping, mating, defending. That's what animalistic life. So until one comes, one tries to understand the higher principle, there's even no conception of calling ourselves human. Ahar nidra bhai metunam cha samani etat pashu bhi naranam. Pashu and nara, humans and animals are same if they are just doing what? Unrestricted sense gratification. Then comes the next level. In karma kanda, there is sense gratification, but it's regulated. At least there is some conception of something higher, some demigod, some god, some puja, some ritual. That's not the ideal, but it is one level up. Then Sakama Karma Yoga. Attached to the fruits, but doing some karma yoga, offering something. Nishkam Karma Yoga, detachment. So work should be done as per Bhagavad Gita with detachment and devotion. That's Nishkam Karma Yoga. And that ultimately ripens to Bhakti Yoga. Then Jnana Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, Bhakti Yoga. But a devotee does not need to, you know, necessarily do or no, go to forest. And we have also discussed that Ashtanga Yoga, one important condition is, is complete celibacy, going into the forest. We discussed it is impractical and Arjuna himself said that, right? If we go back to chapter 6. It's mentioned it's impractical. So what is the most practical, easy, recommended, reliable, and the process for this day and age? That is Bhakti Yoga. And that's what we will start to our discussion with today from chapter 7. And so let's begin this beautiful chapter about Bhakti Yoga. And in the past, we have discussed about different karma, ashtanga, etc., etc. And ultimately, the, the fruit of all that is to become a devotee. And how to become a devotee is by following bhakti yoga. So let's begin this wonderful chapter 7. And very, very important words. Let's, would someone like to read this verse, text number 1? Hare Krishna Parvoji, can I read? Yes, please. Sri Bhagavan Avacha Maya Sakta Manapartha Yogam Yunja Mada Asriya Asansayam Samagram Mam Yathagyasasi Trichirinu Translation by S.C. Bhaktivedan Prabhupada Kijay The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Now hear, O son of Pritha, how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me, with mind attached to me, you can know me in full, free from doubt. Hari Bol. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. I was going through some lectures before the class yesterday, day before, etc., and I was really amazed to see one thing. Prabhupada has given over 20 lectures on this verse. 
in different cities, different parts of the world. So important, Prabhupada's, you know, life and soul is hearing. Prabhupada really emphasized on, on hearing. And this verse is so important because Bhakti Yoga begins with hearing. Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Pada Sevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atmani Vedanam. The nine limbs of bhakti as per Prahlad Maharaj, the great Paramahamsa. The first and the foremost limb is Shravanam. Tachrinam. The word here is Tachrinam. Now, Arjuna, you must hear. That's the point here. Mai asakta, that means being attached to me. Not asakta to hearing and watching some other thing or doing some WhatsApp or being attached to something else. That means you're not really hearing. You may be listening or just casually or doing some hundred things at a time. That's not attached hearing. Attached hearing is like Parikshit Maharaj, knowing that this is my life and soul. If I don't hear this, then I'll be gone. But there's a patient with a deadly disease and the doctor says that you dare not miss these two pills every day. The day you miss, that will be the last day. Will he be attached to taking that pills? Right? He'll be super attached. He'll forget everything but those pills. Right? He cannot forget those pills. So if one, if we still hear the recent story of Dhundakari also, in the glories of Bhagavatam. So Dhundakari was hearing, others were also hearing. Dhundakari being in the ghostly body attained the spiritual form, but others did not. Why? The quality of hearing. So hearing is very important, but hearing is a deep science. We can spend two, three hours, there are multiple lectures about the art of hearing, the science of hearing, how to hear, the do's and the don'ts. But the point is, that we should hear regularly, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. And Prabhupada is quoting so many wonderful purports. Prabhupada always, we can see any words, any even indirect link about hearing Prabhupada's ecstasy, you know, just pours in. And Prabhupada is mentioning so many verses from the Canto 1, Chapter 2 uh, of Srimad Bhagavatam. They all mention about the glories of hearing. Shrinvatam Sakatha Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. Ridyanta Stohiya Bhadrani Vidunoti Suhrit Sita. Rideki Andar Jo Abhadra. That means the bad qualities inside the heart. Lust, anger, greed, envy, pride, illusion. The real infections of this world will, will go away. Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu, same. All the impurities will be gone. How? By Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. And how do we Bhagavata Sevaya? Just by putting some incense? No, the real Bhagavata Sevaya is by hearing, by opening in the book, reading and hearing. Of course, we can offer incense, lamp, etc. Because Bhagavata is not different from Krishna. But the real thing is to hear. Actually, nothing is complete without hearing. Even we go to holy places, it's mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam that going to holy places is incomplete until we go and hear from the sadhus there, from the devotees. Therefore, we must not go alone. Oh, let me go to Rindavan, let me go to Mahapur. What we will know? We will not know anything. Correct? For us, it will be some road, some, some temple, some, some road, some grass, some cows, some, we'll see the externals. Oh, there are also people smoking beery, cigarette, we drinking chai, coffee. But when we hear through the medium of devotees, that is real uh, seeing through the eyes of the scriptures or seeing or we don't see God through eyes, we see God through ears. So hearing is, is very, very important and that's the Acronym for this chapter, the head. The first three verses emphasize about H for hearing. Without hearing, bhakti cannot begin. Simple oral reception. And nowadays, we are so fortunate. At the medium of technology, there are so many wonderful classes by Shri Prabhupada and other wonderful devotees, which we can easily access, right? And that's also wonderful and we must do. 
Uh, we have the Zoom and other platforms where we can hear from YouTube. But we must be cautious because there are so many devotees, so many so-called devotees, so many gurus, so many so-called gurus. So we must not get confused and bewildered. Uh, rather, we should hear from uh, Shri Prabhupada and his wonderful family. Um, and be, otherwise, there is a risk also. So hearing very, very important. And in this verse, Prabhupada is also mentioning another important point and that is about the, the, the three features of the Absolute Truth. Through proper hearing, we will understand it. Have we haven't discussed this point before? The Bhagavan realization, the Paramatma realization, and the Brahman realization. Yes, Prabhuji, I think chapter two. Chapter two, let's see. But yeah, let's quickly go over it again since it's in the purport and Prabhupada repeats it multiple times. So it's quite important. So the Brahman realization is like the level one. Primarily um, the eternity aspect. Those who want to merge in the impersonal effulgence or the effulgence of the supreme impersonal feature. Where there is cannot be a relationship with the Lord. Basically jnana yogis. And they are... Um, they address God as light, God as, as inconceivable, like the sun rays. Sun rays are part of the sun, but we cannot say sun rays is everything. Sun rays without the sun has no meaning. Right? The energetic is the cause of the energy. Sun rays are like the energy. The energetic behind is the sun. So it is um, the process of worship is speculative knowledge. Then there's the Paramatma realization, one aspect, one level up, the localized feature, primarily Dhyana Yogis. We discussed that as well. They are meditating on the, on the Paramatma in the heart. He is omniscient, omnipresent, but they still don't have a personal relationship with the Lord. Right? They don't um, believe in the in the Supreme Lord is Krishna, Rama, Govinda. So, like the sun globe, the analogy is given like the sun globe. And we also discuss the example of milk, the example of train, the example of sun. So many examples we have discussed. But the topmost realization is Krishna is to Bhagavan Swayam, the supreme personal form of the Lord, where we can establish a relationship as a friend, as a brother, as a sister, as, as, a, uh, as, a, as a brother, as a father as a lover, as a servant, as a, so many different, the, the primary and the secondary rasas are there. And then the destination is ultimately the one who establishes relationship with the Lord, one who worships with in the Supreme Personality of God into the process of bhakti, will certainly go back home, back to God. It. The Param Ananda, which we are all looking for. Otherwise, one will keep coming back into the material pool Punarapi Jananam, Punarapi Mananam. So, again, the first verse is hearing. Hearing, hearing, hearing. There is Prabhupada always emphasizes hearing. By hearing only, we can understand. Free from doubt. Now, hear. The word now is also important. Often people delay the hearing process. Okay, hearing is maybe meant for after 50 years or maybe after 70 years, or maybe just seven seconds before I die. <laughs> so often it is delayed. But the scriptures say that we don't know how much seconds or moments we have left, or days or years we have left. Even an 80-year-old has a 20-year-old plan. And a 20-year-old cannot say for certain, I will live 10 or more years. So the life is uncertain. The best time is now. Whatever our age is, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or 100, the best time is now. Already a lot of time has gone. Already we have wasted a lot of time. I have wasted a lot of time. Uh, but now let's be cautious and absorb ourselves in hearing. From whom to hear? From bona fide parampara. Why to hear? To develop Krishna Prem, to be free from all the any diseases of the material world. And when to hear? When to hear? Every day. Correct? 
at least Nitya means 24 7 but we can't do 24 7 but whenever possible even if you're driving you can put some class lecture kirtan bhajan even if we are doing some errands like uh, cooking we can put some class even if we're brushing our teeth we can hear some kirtan bhajan right who is stopping us nowadays is anyone stopping no no one is stopping even if in the office, if situations allow, we can hear parallelly, right? When we are doing our like individual work, we can hear. We are, you know, every day practically, you know, we can if we carefully see, we can hear like five, six hours every day, or at least two, three hours. Um, of course, attentive hearing is exclusive hearing, which we also must try to do, but even um, you know, even if you are doing it along with other activities, that's certainly better than not doing it. Otherwise, the mind will go in some other direction and take our energy. So this is about hearing. Uh, Arjuna, and the last point is very important. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his bona fide devotees in Krishna consciousness, one can understand the science of God. So to love God, to develop bhakti, to develop loving devotional service towards Lord, it's important to hear about God or Krishna. We, uh, the famous example, Rukmini, how she developed attachment towards Lord. She had not seen, she had heard about the Lord. The famous story of the, the fruit seller, she had not seen either Krishna before. She also developed love towards God by hearing about God, by hearing about Krishna. Prabhupada loved hearing. His spiritual master Bhakti Siddhasri Thakur mentioned that Avi Babu really likes to hear. Others went for Yatra. Now, what will the Yatra do when we don't hear the message? Um, and, and I'm sure we all have this experience that one time we were in a Yatra and then uh, uh, kind of we got lost, lost in a sense from the main group. And then we passed that holy site, uh, but we didn't know anything. We passed that site, but, but when we came with devotees, devotees said, oh, this is the place where Damodar Lila happened. Wow, such a holy place. So if we don't see through the eyes of devotees, through the eyes of the scriptures, then we will just pass, pass the material world. Elo or gelo, as Ratandas Thakur or Bhaktinath Thakur, I think. Say papi elo or gelo. We will come in this birth, the precious human life will, is given to us. But if we don't hear, then we'll just pass. We'll just pass on. The chance will be gone. Therefore, we must hear. What to hear, when to hear, how to hear, in a submissive mood, not to challenge, not to prove how much knowledge one has, but to tadvidi pranipati. Very precious. We also inquiring in the humble mood to genuinely develop Krishna praying. So let's move on to number two. Anyone wants to guess? Shital Mataji want to read? Hare Krishna, devotees, Dandavat Prana. Gyanam teham savi gyanam idam vaksham sheshataha. Yadnyatva neha buyo anyatma vashishyate. Translation I shall now declare unto you in full this knowledge, both phenomenal and numinous. This being known, nothing further shall remain for you to know. Haribo. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Mataji. So now Krishna is going to declare about his supremacy. Like how he is the cause of all causes. How is the Parabrahman? How he is the supreme creator? Phenomenal referring to the, the energies, the material energy, the spiritual energies. And numinous referring to the here as the personality or the sweetness of the Supreme Lord. And there's a very nice line in the purport here that complete knowledge can be achieved only by the devotee of the Lord in the disciplic succession. So, 
complete knowledge can be obtained. Yeah. Complete knowledge can be achieved only by the devotee of the Lord in this succession. So it's important to feed from parampara. As we discussed in chapter four also, evam parampara prapta. This is not hearing from any Tom, Dick, Harry. Uh, when we have to, to understand a physics question, we don't go to any person to help with that problem. We go to a physics professor. professor. Same with the, even for material knowledge, it's so true. What to speak of the higher, subtle, spiritual science. So, parampara is very important. And when the cause of all causes becomes known, referring to Krishna here, then everything knowable becomes known and nothing remains unknown. That means when we know Krishna, then we know everything. The famous example is Dhruv Maharaj. Dhruv Maharaj was a five-year-old boy. He did not know any Vedas, mantras, tantras. All he knew was the mantra told by his Guru Om Namo Bhagavate uh, Vasudevaya. Narada Muni told this mantra, he chanted in Vrindavan, in Madhuvan, and uh, that place is still there where Lord Narayan gave him darshan and he touched his transcendental conscial panchajanya and all the divine knowledge was revealed. Divya Gyan Hridya Prakashito, we discussed that in the, the Guru Puja as well. Divya, all the, whatever is to be known will be known. To whom? One who knows Krishna. Very, very important. One time his great Shamanan Prabhu was uh, giving a class. He is a very senior brahmachari in Chopati, almost uh, 30 years plus in brahmachari ashram and for the world. So very, very senior devotee. So one time his mother came for class. He was giving a class. So in the end, you know, speakers ask, uh, does anyone have any questions? Okay. So his mother asked later, not in the class, that what do you mean? Anyone have any question? That means you have answers to all the questions. <laughs> so actually it's true, right? Because if you ask a spiritualist, a pure soul, uh, they have answers to all the questions. Mm. Right? By all the questions, I don't mean that what is the size of a mitochondria in the cell of a body. That's not the, the answer questions which are really pertinent to solve the puzzle of life, to understand who am I? What is the goal of life? Who is God? What is my relationship? Why I'm here? Why I'm suffering? I want to be happy. Why did my grandfather die? I didn't want to be separated from him. Why did I get disease? I didn't want get, to get disease. Why am I suffering? Why things are not happening the way I want to happen? I want it to rain, it's sunny. So all these questions, you know, and much more. These are the real questions. Srimad Bhagavatam explains everyone is asking questions. Everyone is asking questions day and night, 24-7. What are the questions? Where will I get food? What are, what's in the lunch? When will I eat? What will happen to me in the future? What will happen to my children? Basically, eating, sleeping, mating, dependent. Will I get a job? How much I will earn? How big will be my house? What kind of car will I have? The birds are also asking questions. Everyone is asking question after question. But the questions which pertain to the absolute truth, those are the real questions worthy to be asked. And therefore, Shukadev Goswami or the, the Sutta Goswami prays the questions asked by Parikshit and the Sutta uh, and the sages of Nemisharanya that these are the real questions. Loka Mangala, they just don't purify the one who is asking the question. Therefore, Loka Mangala, therefore, the benefit of the whole world. If it would not have been for the questions of Parishad Maharaj and the sages of Naimi Sharanya, how would we have received the message of Srimad Bhagavatam? So if it would not have been, you know, so many devotees asking Prabhupada's question that how would we, the nectar come out? So we must ask genuine questions, not in the mood to challenge or disapprove, or, uh, but in the mood of honest, simple, sincere, humble inquiry. And one more point here, which Pandi what he was mentioning, that Krishna is our father. 
to know about the father, we inquire from the mother. The, way, the scriptures are like the mother. Very simple. That's a simple bhakti yoga process. We approach the mother to inquire about the father. So we approach the scriptures to inquire about Krishna. But sometimes people want to directly jump to the pastimes of the Lord. They're especially the Rasalila. Oh, tell me about the Rasalila pastime. Tell me about the Gopi pastime, this pastime, that pastime. We cannot understand the the sweetness of the Lord until we understand the greatness of the Lord. Very important point. So first, Krishna explains Bhagavad Gita. In this, primarily, it's about the greatness of the Lord. How is the cause of all causes? And even in the Bhagavatam, the first nine cantos are primarily about the greatness. Of course, the Poshanam aspect is also there, how the Lord is so sweet, how he protected Gajendra, Jamil, etc. There are multiple past times, but the greatness is explained. So one must, otherwise one will take it cheaply. Otherwise familiarity breeds contempt. Otherwise and we see that what to speak of ordinary human beings, even the great Indra and Brahma also got bewildered. They also thought, while well, this boy, little boy is playing, having some pastimes with his friends, looks like an ordinary boy. They also forgot the greatness. This is the Supreme Lord, our Master. Deva, Deva, the, our, our, you know, we are his part and parcel. So he, they also forgot. So therefore, here, the potency is, is explained, or Krishna is going to explain in this chapter, the different energies. And then we will better appreciate the pastimes. And it is not that Krishna is proud. Krishna is most humble. Yeah. So if, if the president of the country says, and the president, it's not the, that he's proud, right? It's, it's the fact. But if an ordinary person who says, no, no, I'm the president, like if I say I'm the president of the country, then that's foolishness and uh, maybe enviousness also. So, so, therefore, when we know Krishna, then we know everything. And when we don't know Krishna, then nothing will be known. Real knowledge is not math science. Of course, we have to learn that, understand that for the livelihood, whatever, job, business. But until the, we understand Krishna, the goal of life is, is incomplete. Now, can we understand Krishna? Can we understand all his energies? Can we understand all his qualities? No, because they are infinite and we are finite. <laughs> we are infinite is symbol actually. He is infinite. An infinite symbol cannot understand the, the, un, the infinite Lord or his infinite energies. But even through the word infinite, his symbol intelligence, if we sincerely here, we will come to this understanding that Krishna, you are the master, you are the everything, and I am just a tiny spark of your splendor. Chinmaya bhaskara tumi kiranira karna ami prabhu tumi ami nitya dasa That's that you are like the sun. I am a tiny spark of your ray. Kira, kira nira karna ami Kiran means ray of sun. Karna means a particle. Or an iota of that Kiran, I am that. How many rays are there of sun? Can anyone count? <laughs> infinite rays. Now of those infinite rays, so many Karnas must be there. Sometimes, you know, we see the dust particles in the sun rays. Right? So imagine how many particles are there. Even in a small, like one meter cube or one feet cube, there are like infinite particles. What to speak of the whole Brahmand? What to speak of the so many, not just this universe, thousands and millions of those universes are there. So all this will help us to understand that our position and then it will be easier to take shelter of the Lord when we be through, through the proper knowledge of Bhagavad Gita to proper understanding of the glories of the Supreme Lord, 
through the medium of proper hearing. Any comments anyone has before we move to the next? Okay, one more verse and then we'll go to the next part. Yes, anyone wants to read? Yes, uh, any, uh, sorry, with, uh, with Anita. Hare Krishna, Manusha Nam Sahasri Shu, Bashid Yatati Siddhaye, Yatata Mapi Siddhanam, Kashin Mamviti Tatata. Translation Out of many thousands among men, one may endeavor for perfection, and of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. This is very, very important words, actually. And we'll take some time to discuss that. Maybe let's take your perspective as well. What do you think? Bhakti is easy? Um, this is not easy. Yes, Prabhupada is also saying, actually, the path of bhakti is not easy. Sometimes the jnanis and this and that, they say, well, bhakti is very easy. But simply chant here, it's not that easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. It's like actually waging a war against Maya. Maya, which is Krishna's energy, trying to pull us, trying to allure us through different mediums, the eyes, the you know, temptations for the eyes, temptations for the nose, temptations for the skin, temptations for the tongue. Every direction there are temptations, right? Every direction, everywhere, there are so many temptations. The whole world is, is basically a circus trying to tempt us, tempt the material senses away from Krishna. 99.99% .99 of the population is just busy in one purpose. And what's that purpose? Eating, sleeping, mating, defending. One may say, well, I work for a multinational company. I'm the general manager there. I'm the vice president there. But what do we do with that general manager and vice president or whatever CEO to feed the family without any regulation, to, to enjoy more, to collect more wealth, to, to basically do sense gratification in a more polished way. The dog may sleep on the street in India. The pigs may sleep on a in the street. They may eat what in a gutter, but they are happy with that. They sleep peacefully. Often the humans have to take sleeping pills and whatnot to get proper sleep. The dog, dogs and hogs have better sleep, better um, in all these propensities: eating, sleeping, mating, defending. They are better, and they don't have to work hard and go to office, go to school, go to college and work hard, right? Humans who work hard eight hours, 10 hours, 20 hours, and then they have very little time for sense gratification. Dogs and hogs, they don't go to school, they don't go to college, they don't go to work. All they do is sense gratification. So the point is 99.99% .99 of the population is unrestricted sense enjoyment. That's the human life is wasted. A very tiny fraction of those here out of even, even try to you know, understand something about God or have some piety in their life. Like they may come for some Janmashtami event. On Janmashtami in the temples, thousands of devotees come, thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand devotees come in India. Of course, this COVID situation is a little different. Even this COVID time, my mother was selling, there were thousands of people, actually. The whole temple was packed. There are queues like miles long. But on Janmashtami Day, there are thousands of people, 10,000. Do you think all of those are sincerely trying to read Bhagavad Gita, chant the holy names, and etc., etc.? No. With all respects to them, we are not um, you know, demeaning anyone, but the point is they are also trying, but the main goal in their life is not bhakti. The main goal is like 99% sense gratification with some piety. 
like you make the whole you know sometimes you make a sabji like let's say aloo gobi okay the main aloo gobi is the core on top you sprinkle some dhania correct coriander so his grace goranga prabhu said that some people just sprinkle some bhakti piety some spiritual life in their life which is better than zero but the main course is sense gratification right okay go to the temple but not every day maybe once a year it's fine okay you chant no 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 it's not time to chant you chant you know when when you are at 50 years old one day what he was about to join the ashram this brahmachari ashram his parents said no 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 you can't join the brahmachari ashram the parents came the father came well father um they so they said to the the authorities there well, my son is too young he is he is immature this and that you can't take him let him go grow experience okay he said okay now you are grown experience you come take your son he said okay let me ask my wife <laughs> let me ask my wife and then he consulted with his wife and said no no you keep the son it's fine <laughs> this is these the times are so unfortunate recently you know mataji shared a drama about misdirected youth the children will say i want a cigarette the father will say okay drink uh, smoke the filtered cigarette don't smoke the cheap beedi but the, the child will say i want to chant hari krishna i say never never do that don't. this is the state of life rather than encouraging or totally opposite was bhakti vinod thakur he said go to jagannathas baba ji get initiation and don't show me your face until you come get with the initiation and don't enter the home now it is suppose it if you take initiation if you take to spiritual life then don't enter the home <laughs> right the point is how many of you have been to a river like ganga or some with a good flow right if you just be there we will be taken in the downstream direction right so the whole material world is flowing downstream downstream means to away from god the entropy is increasing for example there are no classes about um, how to waste time on facebook how to watch movies right how to smoke cigarette the natural flow of this world will take us in those negative propensities very simple and we see that right the youth is naturally taken in that direction now even like a 2 year old knows how to operate a mobile phone right they 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 don't want to coach them right they they somehow know but to go against the flow is always hard what to speak of going against the flow even staying there is not easy because so don't be surprised rupert said don't be surprised if devotees Uh, come for some time and then they leave the path of bhakti. Be surprised if anyone stays, because this verse says, "Manusya nam sahasreshu sahastra thousands and thousands among thousands, one will endeavor for perfection. But try it. They will try. Let me try something for uh, to achieve the real purpose of life. Let me go against the flow." if we do things which everyone is doing then we will go the same destination where everyone is going very simple and that is the hellish planets because the lifestyle we see the meat eating intoxication drugs and these are very famous topics um um irregulated life lack of krishna consciousness what to speak of even even the lack of basic human values is going very fast but to speak of the higher level of bhakti so bhakti means to go against the current so in this very rare souls will take to this process and for those who when we try very rare will achieve perfection how based on their sincerity based on their eagerness so therefore we have to be careful like shobri muni Uh, when in the bhagavatam so many examples are there uh, that there is there are a lot of distractions so if we don't want to be the ones who practice bhakti for few years or few decades and then leave 
that means we have to be very careful. Because in the Janmashtami program, like I'll give this Tampa example, we had close to 300 registrations. 300 people registered, they got Prashad, very nice, very nice. One third of them came for the Zoom program, but only few of them you know, actually come for the regular programs. Maybe 10, 20 ish. This Bhagavad Gita program was started in the lieu that, uh, in the idea that we distributed almost 1000 Bhagavad Gitas. We, we sent all those uh, in and around Tampa, or very nice devotees did. The goal was okay, everyone must be eager to read here. And then we started this program at the beginning of the year so that everyone can get a chance to read here. But out of those thousands, about 150 devotees registered also. 200 devotees registered. But out of the 200, how many come? On an average, about 20. So, and this is common across everywhere. When I was in college also, um, in the first program, 100 will come. By the end of this two, three months, only 10 will stay. And by the end of three, four years, out of those 10, only one, two will stay. Because the, the, the allurement is so strong. Mm. But we should not lose hope, Prabhupada says, even one pure devotee can deliver the whole world. Mm. So, so that's what we, Prabhupada said, we have opened this institute to, to, to make pure devotees. These temples are like the spiritual hospitals to cure the diseases of lust, anger, greed. There are so many nowadays subtle diseases or, or uh, like uh, emotional traumas, depression, suicide propensity. So many young people are falling in prey of all these. Why? Lack of Krishna consciousness. That's a real reason. If one is Krishna conscious, one will really understand the purpose of life. That Manishya, that human life is very rare. And I must use it in the best purpose. And the best purpose is to become his devotee. And then Krishna is assuring that you will really get the true happiness which the soul is looking for. So, Muktanam Apisiddhanam Narayana Parayana Sudurlabha Prashantatma Kotish Api Mahamuni In the Bhagavatam. This verse comes in the sixth canto. Amongst the many millions who are liberated and perfect in knowledge of liberation, one may be a devotee of Lord Narayana. Such devotees are very, are fully peaceful and extremely rare. So Sadhu Sangha is very rare. Brahmanda Brahmite Kono Bhagyavana Jeeva, out wandering in this cycle of birth and death in this Brahmanda. Kono Bhagyavana Jiva, who is that fortunate soul? Very, very rare. Guru Krishna Prasad, Pai Bhakti who achieves this path of Krishna consciousness. So, it is very, very rare. What we have achieved is very, very rare. What we have given a chance is very, very rare. We must understand that it's not easy, but it is a real goal of life. But often, what to do? Still, the conditioned mind thinks, no, no, the, what other people are doing is actually that's better. Um, and uh, because the whole world is running in one direction, and then that may sometimes a devotee may question or uh, in the neophyte state that probably, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I'm the odd one out, or maybe I'm not doing something which I'm supposed to do. Because if everyone is running in the one direction, then uh, it may question, one may question oneself. Therefore, it is very important to be in good association. So we don't feel that we are the only unique species in the world. That there are thousands of others as well. Actually, in the jail, material world is a jail, right? In the jail, we see only one or two, um, like a few species or a few beings, human beings, which are there, not because of the bad they have done, referring to the jailer, referring to the wardens, etc. They are not there because of some bad activity or some killing or something. Majority are there because of the bad activities. Correct? This is an example. So in the material world, 
the few are there, the pure souls who have come outside the jail, from outside the jail, that's the spiritual world, into the jail to help improve the inmates of the jail so they can live a better life. Is it getting too confusing? So we should not be confused by the other people in the jail because everyone is suffering only. Everyone is suffering. We should see the pure souls. Okay, if I follow their footsteps, I will get out of the jail. And then majority of the population is, is in the spiritual world. Three-fourth of the creation is the spiritual world, which is beyond our understanding and which may, we are not aware of. So therefore, we don't even count. We just see with this, our limited eyes, oh, this jail, like everyone is enjoying, so I should also do the same. But majority of the there is, is, in, is outside the jail, which is spiritual world. We should see the pure devotees, the gopis, devotees like Prahlad, Amrish Maharaj. Then, and in the world also, have good association. Otherwise, if we don't have good association, then we will be left out. Then we will certainly... Certainly, we can never bhakti. It is no doubt. If someone thinks they can practice bhakti alone without association, the Upad said they are in hallucination. So to get out of the hallucination, we need association. So this is the point here that let's not be surprised if people leave. They should certainly try to inspire, encourage everyone to the best of our abilities, prayers, distributing food, prashadam, books, holy name, to best of our time, place, situations, and um, continue, even if challenges will come, right? First of all, take a solemn vow that I will not leave the path of Krishna consciousness. Ups and downs will come in our life because we are in this material world. Till the last breath, they'll continue to come. Health and disease will come. Wealth and poverty will come. Relationship issues will come. Emotional challenges will come. But if we are really true to Krishna, if Krishna is our real pati, a chaste wife never leaves. Ups and downs come. Relationships, you know, ups and downs come. S situations change. Uh, the color of the skin changes. You know, but a chaste wife does not leave. Similarly, if we are chaste to Krishna and Guru, then we must not leave, first of all. Um, and not just stay, but stay happy and enthusiastic devotee. Because staying is one thing. Uh, but being happy, enthusiastic, and eager for seva, that will lead to great spiritual progress. Yes, it's difficult. All great things in the world are difficult. Why? Because of our bad conditioning. Watching three hours movie is very easy. Watching three, 30 minutes of Bhagavad Gita class or Bhagavatam class is very difficult. Why? Because of bad conditioning. If we have to get up for a, let's say we go to Hawaii, tomorrow I have a flight at 4 a.m., I'll get up. My bad condition. Oh, I got a free, you know, let's say you got a free like gift hamper, a ticket in hotel in Switzerland. All, everything paid. Nice ticket, nice hotel, everything. And then um, will you miss that flight? No one will miss that flight. Right? We'll be all eager. We'll not sleep. <laughs> so, eagerness. That's, that's uh, because of our you know, past baggage. So, but with good association, it can certainly it can become easy. Watching movies and this becomes is easy. Bhakti is hard. Five minutes chanting purely, you know, our mind is, will go in 500 directions. But Playing video games for five hours, samadhi, hmm? right? Hey, Baba, it's like so much into it. When the character jumps, that person also jumps. When the, in it, and then the drive, and you see that? You, you happen? Have you experienced this? <laughs> you are into it. Complete samadhi. But five minutes of japa is, is very difficult. So, and there are such multiple examples. To donate five rupees or five dollars to the temple, very difficult. But to eat or for our own sense gratification, five hundred dollars, oh, it's fine. Me, my family, yeah, I'll do anything for them. 
right so so it's not uh, it's not the time it's the taste it's the priority so I'll, I'll pause here actually i'm already a little over time which was the plan but because Sampada Mataji is going to do a kahoot quiz also for the first six chapters but before we wrap up any comments or questions the first three verses which we focused on hearing and understanding about the, the rarity of Krishna consciousness and the rarity of devotees. Anyone has any comments before we pause? Okay, so uh, the next part of the program is a short quiz um, from, I'm sure, who will get a chance to, to read or do some prep work for the quiz? The first six chapters is a quiz, right? Hmm. Okay, some of you did. Nice. And, and most of you heard the classes in the past. So I would say now you know how to join Kahoot. You can get your other gadget. And in this gadget, your laptop or whatever you're using, you'll see the screen. Log in and Sampada Mataji is going to share the screen. So you can do the Kahoot now. And I encourage everyone to participate. We'll go quick. But this will help us to do a kind of a good summary of um, all the, the six chapters also, the important points. And I'm very grateful to Sampada Mataji for, for helping in this uh, endeavor and helping with the quiz and the questions. Yeah, please. Uh, yep. Yeah, classic, go to the classic one. Are you hearing the music also, Sampada Mataji? Hmm? You are here? Now, if you want to play, we, we can't hear. So what you can do is um, share with your with your sound on. There's a button like share the sound as well. So you have to unshare and then while sharing, you have to click on a button, a ra uh, radio button kind of thing. And you're on uh, mute, so you can always unmute and speak as well. Okay, Babaji, I'm so sorry. Um, I still don't hear the sound. That's fine. We'll do without sound. You will. You can do the comment. Wait, I can do it again. Let me just do it again. <laughs> it's my first time, so I don't know it. It's on the bottom. Oh, okay, I know left. it. Okay, yeah, I get it. Can you hear it now? Yeah. Can you hear it? Okay. Yes, yes. If you want, you can lower the volume to the the right top. And you see the volume button, you can lower it if you want. Can you, is this fine? You can put it a little down, otherwise you won't be able to hear a little down. down. That's good. Yeah, everyone, please participate. It will be nice. Don't worry if even if you answer wrong, there is no penalty. <laughs> so please try your best. Ready? Will we start, or is anyone needing more time? Yes, please start. Oh. Everyone is here. Okay. Should I lock the thing or like just do No, let it be open. Okay. Um, so our first question is 
The battlefield of Kurukshetra is also spe- specifically defined as Vidya Shetra, Dharmakshetra, Adharma Shetra, or all of the above. Okay, I'm just gonna go then. Okay. You have to answer correctly and quickly. Can you get Arjuna most calls points? Krishna as blank, which means husband of the goddess of fortune. Madhu Sudana, Rishi Kesha, Govinda, or Madhava. Okay. Um, do you need like the explanation for this one? Or should I just go? Yeah, Madhava means the husband of God is a fortune. Others have different meanings. So in this case, it's Madhava. Thank you. Wherever Krishna is present, the blank is also present. Great warrior Arjuna, goddess of fortune, transcendental bond, misfortune. Okay. It's goddess of fortune. It's goddess of fortune. Okay. Um. How can the desires of the living entity be satisfied? When the living entity renounces everything, when the living entity lives a very charitable life, when the living entity tries to satisfy the senses of Govinda, all of the above. It's actually a green one because like we don't want to renounce everything. We want to live here, but then like in the world, but then off the world. That's what I know. Okay. Um number five is why the hearts of the sons of Tita Rastra were shattered by the sound vibrated by the Pandavas conch shell because blank. Pandavas were expert in the art of blowing the conch shell. Pandavas had full confidence in Krishna that he would take care, care of them. Those A, A and B, none of these. Okay. Number six, as per chapter, chapter two of Gita from unfulfilled desire, what is born? Sadness, self-pity, anger, or sympathy. It's anger. Yeah. Question seven. What is material compassion compared to in Bhagavad Gita 2.1? Fire covered by smoke, saying, saving the dress of a drowning man, killing the demon of misunderstanding, all of these. Question number eight, how does Arjuna find a solution to his confusion, whether to fight or not to push, or not to fight? By using his own intelligence, by scientific reasoning of the outcome of the war, by analytical study of the opposite party's power, by surrendering onto Lord Krishna, the disciple. That's the green one. Number nine, what are the different signs of ignorance of the self, of the real self? Thinking I'm the doer and greater than everybody else. Thinking that Krishna is just, just an ordinary person, but with some mystic powers. Thinking that I am the eternal servant of the Supreme Lord Krishna, both of one and two. Yeah, it's one and two. We're going to go to question number 10. Who attains peace? One who chases desires and attempts to fulfill them. One who performs 108 fasting. One who, do, one who does pilgrimage by foot for 18 years. 
one who abandoned all desires and moves about without sense of highness. As per chapter two of Gita, anger gives gives rise to self pity, remorse, seeks empathy, ambition, hard work, success, delusion, loss of memory, destruction of discrimination, or sympathy, serenity, and then sol solitude. Oh, it's the one. Question twelve. A man engaged in devotional service rids himself of blank actions in life. Good, bad, both good and bad, none of the above. One more person. Okay. Yeah, it's good and bad. What are the characteristics of the soul? Unborn, indestructible and unchangeable cannot be burned, dried with, or withered by wind, everlasting, immovable, all-pervading, invisible, inconceivable, and immutable, all of the above. Yes. If the soul is indestructible, then why animal slaughter is bad? Because it involves violence to the innocent animal, because it invo involves whimsical killing, because it is not approved by authority, all of the above. Person in transcendental consciousness have no blank. Money, family, materialistic desires, love and respect for others. Okay. Question number 16. A true devotee does not get disturbed by the miseries because he is, he is special. He accepts them as the mercy of Lord. He can overcome them by some mystic powers, none of the above. What is our sense compared to? A lotus flower, a chariot, venomous serpent, none of the above. the yellow one. What is the unique quality of work done in Krishna consciousness? Work done in Krishna consciousness has a permanent effect even though half done. Work done in Krishna consciousness has a temporary effect. It binds us to material world or it makes one lazy. the red one. How are the Vedas manifested? Vedas were written and corrected by Max Muller. Vedas are some fictitious work by some unknown author. Vedas are a combination of myths and facts, hence are unreliable. Vedas are directly manifested from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yes, it's the green one. As fire is covered by smoke, as the mirror is covered by dust, the living entity is similarly covered by anger, skin, lust, or cells. It's lust. Why is it said that people who eat for sense gratification eat only sin? Because they don't share anything, they're selfish. Because they're very self-centered. Because they don't offer it to Krishna, all of the above. Um, under the influence of false ego, the bewildered spirit soul thinks himself as a doer which are carried out by material nature, the self, the super self, spiritual nature. There's a hand in the picture, so.
true or false. For a sense enjoyment, one can act in any capacity of the social order, but one follows the rules and regulations. True or false? Yeah, it's false. <laughs> 24. This material creation by the Lord is a chance given by Lord, Lord for us to go back home, back to God and enjoy this material creation for our sense gratification for no reason, earn a lot of money and fame. That's to go back home, back to God. 25. Why did Arjuna inquire that Krishna had instructed the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita to Vivaswan, who is senior in birth to Krishna? Arjuna wanted to record the historical activities of Krishna. Arjuna wanted to dispel the doubts of the demonic people, both of the above, none of the above. Yeah, it's the blue one. What comparison Mayavadis gave when they explained the merging of the individual souls? Bhagavad Gita 4.10. Leaves merging into the tree, bubbles of ocean merge into the ocean, sand particles merge in the ocean, one of the above. I mean, none of the above. Sorry for that. Okay. Yeah, it's the blue one. 24. Lord Krishna created four divisions of the social of the society, namely Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Sudra. Lord Krishna belongs to Vaishyas, Brahmana, Kshatriya, and Anati above. Yeah, it's none of the above because I don't know the explanation. Sorry. Uh, 28. Why one should follow Arjuna's footsteps to understand Bhagavad Gita? Bhagavad Gita 4.16. Because Arjuna was a great leader to rule, because Arjuna was a great disciple of Dronacharya, because of direct instruction of Lord Krishna to Arjuna, because Arjuna was a great fighter. Twenty-nine. What is an impersonal Brahman? Bhagavad Gita four point thirty-five. Effulgence of Lord Krishna, a black hole, all the Paramatmas together, me, you, and everyone. How does one attain Lord's eternal abode after leaving this body? Bhagavad Gita 4.9. By being charitable, by performing yogic process, by relieving oneself from the bondage of material hankerings, by understanding the transcendental nature of the, bo of the body and activities of the Lord. How does Krishna reciprocate with his devotees in the transcendental world? Bhagavad Gita 4.11. He reciprocates according to the devotee's perfection. He reciprocates according to the devotee's fearlessness. He reciprocates according to the devotee's desires. One of the above. Who is qualified for the transcendental knowledge? Bhagavad Gita 4.34. Ignorant, faithless, submissive, doubting soul. True or false? The Lord is responsible for the conditional existence of the soul. Bhagavad Gita 5.15. True or false? Thirty-four, blank is a subtle form of conditioning. Bhagavad Gita 5.15, desire, beauty, false ego, time. The highest form of the absolute truth is Bhagavad Gita 5.17. The Brahman effulgence, Bhagavan, Paramatma, none of these.
It's Bhagavan. 36. Who, although being in this material world, are already situated in Brahman. Equipoise self realized souls, demoniac personalities having an equal vision of enmity for everyone, charitable persons, people envious for the whole world alike. Thirty-seven, a person of controlled senses cannot be blind to from anyone. Separated, satisfied, offensive friend. It is offensive. Thirty-eight. When is the living entity in its real or natural state of life? Bhagavad Gita 6.2. When it is entrapped by Maya, when it is aware of the spiritual energy, when it is engaged in sense gratification, when it gives up sense gratification due to some natural causes like disease. Okay, it's the blue one. Thirty-nine. Who is a perfect example of how to engage all senses, hands, legs, head, etc., in the service of Krishna? Durvasa Muni, the great king Pururu, Pururva, Katvanga Maharaj, Maharaj Ambarisha. Yes, it is Maharaj Ambaris. which yoga system was rejected by Arjuna by saying that it's impractical and that it is impractical. Okay. Astanga yoga, jnana yoga, karma yoga, and hatha yoga. What is required to remain in the quality of Brahman? Identification with the absolute, fixing one's mind on the lotus feet of the Lord, Consciousness eating a lot of pizzas. Forty two. Who cannot bear to live for a moment without seeing Krishna? Probably the six point thirty. A pure devotee, a gentle person, Hollywood star, a kind person. Yes, it's a pure devotee. What is the primary characteristic of the yoga principle? Bhagavad Gita 6.20. By the practice of yoga, one becomes sensual to become detached from material nature and be attached to spiritual nature. By the practice of yoga, one becomes religious, one gets a wonderful body. Forty-four. What happens to a person who, on the path of self-realization, cannot attain perfection? He meets destruction in the material world. He meets destruction in the spiritual world. He would continue from where he left in his next life. All his spiritual endeavor will be lost. Forty-five. Which of the following yoga system admits householder brahmacharis? Jnana yoga, jnana yoga, all of these bhakti yoga. And this was our last one. Okay. Good job, guys. This is wonderful. Thank you so much, Sampada Mataji, for conducting this wonderful quiz. I hope everyone relished it. Yes. And thank you. Thank Avani, Vedehi, Vinita. Okay. Number five, Ravi Prabhu. <laughs> Four, Vedehi. Third is Avani. 
second Anita, Madhaji and Athar Prabhu. And then Vinita got the first prize. Wow. Hari bol. Good job to all of you and good job to everyone who participated because we just learned in bhakti there is no loss. There's only gain. Even our participation is, is wonderful and very pleasing to Krishna. So I hope you all relished it. Wow, look at the timing. It's just dot on time. <laughs> so Sampada Mataji coordinated this wonderful quiz. I'm very grateful to you and I hope you all relished it. So thank you for so nicely reading, hearing Bhagavad Gita, giving your association and um, making bhakti fun. This is the goal of life. So any closing comments? Anyone wants to say something? Any thoughts before we wind up? Okay, um, so we will pause here. And as you know, that His Grace uh, Anutma Prabhu and Rukmini Mataji will be in Tampa for the next two days. So there are multiple programs today, afternoon, late afternoon, then evening, then tomorrow morning, tomorrow uh, kids' class at 11.30 and then uh, afternoon program. So those who can come physically can come. Those who can't come physically can come on Zoom. Okay, as far as possible. So thank you again. Bhagavad Gita Upanishad Ki Jai, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Samaveta Gaur Bhaktarinda Ki Jai, Panchakal Patarukhyas Chakra Pasandu Bhyay Vachavatitana Pavanibhyo, Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namo. Hari Bol, thank you so much. Hare Hare Krishna. Thank you, Parvaji. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna.